yes i am raghavan chemistry faculty from all fours colleges so i will welcome you all for the all fours chemistry e learning program session 21st okay so in the last session that is in session 20th in the last so we have done the derivation of de broglie's equation and some numericals based on that concept okay we have done some numericals based on the de broglie theory the de broglie theory it explains the dual nature of a particle under motion that is any particle under motion any particle under motion it possesses particle nature as well as wave nature that is he explained the dual nature of the particle okay dual nature of the particle he explained now the de broglie equation has great significance for microscopic particles okay if the mass of the particle is very less or you can say negligible so for which the de broglie's wave length is very high de broglie's wave length is very high for them okay so therefore de broglie's equation that is lambda is equals to h by mv or lambda is equals to h by p de broglie's equation has great significance for microscopic particles like electrons okay say for example next one for macroscopic particles macroscopic means heavier particles for example cricket ball okay so the cricket ball when person hit for six so when the ball is moving in the air being it is heavier particles it looks like a particle but not like a wave okay because for macroscopic particles lambda is equals to lambda is equals to h by mv or we can say lambda is equals to h by p that is the mass of the particle is high very high so therefore the de broglie's wavelength is negligible that means that object possess particle nature that is macroscopic particles for macroscopic particles momentum is high for macroscopic particles momentum is high that that momentum is high means what de broglie's wavelength is very less negligible that means it shows particle nature but not wave nature okay that is the significance of the de broglie equation we have done that in the previous session only we completed and we experienced some numericals based on this concept and based on kinetic energy also we experienced okay now <clears throat> in this session let us find one or two numericals on de broglie's theory and let us take up the next concept is heisenberg's uncertainty principle okay now let us experience some numerical on de broglie's equation okay numerical on de broglie's okay let us find numerical on de broglie's numerical on de broglie numerical on de broglie de broglie's equation numerical on de broglie's equation okay so write down the numerical yes the numerical is like this calculate de broglie's wavelength of an electron traveling with 1% speed of light yes that is the numerical calculate de broglie's wavelength of an electron calculate de broglie's wavelength of an electron of an electron moving moving with 1% speed of light moving with 1% speed of light okay 1% speed of light that is the question 1% speed of light okay once again the problem is calculate de broglie's wavelength so as we know that the concept formula is lambda is equals to h by mv okay h by mv h by mv lambda is equals to h by mv so okay now lambda now you are calculating lambda okay lambda h is equals to planck's constant m is equals to mass of the electron okay electron mass of the electron and v is equals to velocity of the 
electron that is he said that it is traveling with 1% speed of light okay that should be very careful so now planck's constant let us take a planck's constant 6.625 into 10 to the power minus 34 that means i took in si units joule seconds okay joule seconds now mass of the electron 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg okay velocity of the electron we know that that is 3 into 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second okay so this is velocity of the electron but it is traveling with 1% speed of the electron that is velocity of the light okay v so this is traveling with uh, c velocity of the light is this much okay so now the velocity of that electron v is traveling with 1% of this 1% okay 1% of this so 1% of this that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 that is equals to so 3 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second yes that is the velocity now we should consider 1% of that okay now lambda is equals to 6.625 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second by mass of the electron 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg 31 kg okay thirty one kg into velocity three into ten to the power six three into ten to the power six meters per second okay so on solving this lambda is equals to lambda is equals to you can find that answer okay that answer is yes okay 242.7 242.7 into 10 to the power minus 12 10 to the power minus 12 meters okay this is the answer for this problem okay once again let us go through the problem once again okay the numerical based on the de Broglie's equation okay now the numerical is like this Calculate de Broglie's wavelength of an electron of an electron moving with 1% speed of light moving with 1% speed of the light. Now the data collection is like this. Okay. Here in this lambda that is de Broglie's wavelength we are calculating this and h is the Planck's constant value h is Planck's constant okay the value is in SI unit and the mass of the electron 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg okay and velocity of the electron that is velocity of the light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second okay so that is 1% of that 1% of this is equals to 3 into 10 to the power 6 meters per second okay so this is the electron is traveling with this much of speed yes that is the data we understand from the given problem okay next substituting that values so lambda is equals to h by m into v then lambda is equals to this okay so this is the numerical based on the de Broglie's equation okay concept of the numerical is it clearly understood first problem then data analysis remember the important point is so all the contents must be in the same units okay so they should not be in different for example if if the Planck's constant value considered in ergs we should not consider like that okay it must be in the same units that is SI unit, SI unit, SI unit like that. Okay. So 
if we, if we consider in the different units, so you cannot get the right answer, okay. So for the objective examination point of view, see each and everything, each and every moment is very, very important. So read the problem twice, okay. Then from this try to understand what data is available from this, okay. So you are calculating lambda and we know that Planck's constant value we know and mass of the electron also we know because nothing is given. Mass of the electron we know and velocity of the light we know that. It is traveling with 1% velocity, oh, that means this is the complete uh, velocity of the light. In that, it is traveling with 1%, okay, this much of speed, right. So, data you have to get yourself only because nothing is available in the problem, okay. Then, the understood data is substituted in the required formula. Then, the solution problem, okay. This is like this. Now, now this is. De Broglie's concept is completed now. De Broglie's theory is done. Next coming to the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Okay. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Or else we can also calculate one more numerical. Okay. We can also find one more numerical based on this. One more numerical on this. Okay. Write down one more numerical on De Broglie only because de Broglie numericals I think we have done one and two three numericals three numericals we have done okay let us go for the next one de Broglie numerical only okay right calculate the de Broglie's wavelength of an electron Calculate de Broglie's wavelength of an electron. Calculate de Broglie's wavelength of an electron. In fourth orbit of hydrogen atom. In fourth orbit of hydrogen atom. I repeat. Calculate de Broglie's wavelength of an electron. Of an electron. In fourth orbit in fourth orbit of hydrogen atom yes fine so that is lambda is equals to we have to find in fourth orbit of hydrogen atom so what is the shortcut de Broglie's wavelength of electron in an orbit in an orbit is equals to in an orbit is equals to yes 3.33 into n angstrom units that is the logical approach to calculate the de Broglie's wavelength of the electron in nth orbit okay now the problem is that is equals to 3.33 into fourth orbit n is equals to fourth orbit 4 okay so that is angstrom units okay you may consider that angstrom units that is this angstroms or you can say suppose r that is equals to r say that is equals to 3.33 into 4 into 10 to the power minus 8 centimeters or 3.33 into 4 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters okay this is in angstroms and this is in centimeters or this is in meters. Like that we can calculate de Broglie's wavelength of the given problem. Okay, like this. Like this also we can expect the shortcut. That is de Broglie's wavelength of an electron in an orbit is equals to 3.33 into n angstrom units. Where n stands for the orbit. Okay, that is the problem in this. Okay, is it the concept is clearly understood? Calculate de Broglie's wavelength of an electron in fourth orbit of hydrogen atom. Okay, this is for this approach formula. 3.33 into n angstrom units. Okay, as we know that one angstrom unit is equals to 10 to the power minus 8 centimeters. Centimeter, that is why I took this one. Or it is equals to 10 to the power minus 10 meters that is why i took this one that is in meters and this is in centimeters we took okay so this is a numerical based on this now let us find 
calculate okay is it the concept is clear everything is clear right done okay next problem let us see one more numerical on this de broglie only okay the numerical is like this an electron beam emerges from an accelerator so with a kinetic energy of 100 electron volts the kinetic energy of 100 electron volts what is the de broglie's wavelength what is the de broglie's wavelength yes what is de broglie's wavelength yes calculate the de broglie's wavelength in that problem okay Once again the problem is an electron beam emerges from an accelerator with a kinetic energy with a kinetic energy with a kinetic energy is equals to 100 electron volts kinetic energy is equal to 100 electron volts okay then what is the de broglie's wavelength of the electron what is the de broglie's wavelength lambda we have to find out lambda we have to find okay so then <coughs> right now de broglie's wavelength what is the relation between de broglie's equation and kinetic energy yes de broglie's wavelength is equals to de broglie's wavelength is equals to h by planck's constant by under root 2ke into m 2ke into m that is mass of the object that is mass of the particle okay so that is the approach for the numerical de broglie's wavelength is equals to h is a planck's constant and kinetic energy and it is m this is the yes now let us see the data what data is available yes h is a planck's constant h is equals to 6.625 yes into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second yes joule second and we know that what is the mass of the electron mass of the electron is equals to 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg that is the mass of the electron then kinetic energy is given okay that kinetic energy ke is equals to 100 jo 100 electron volts as we know that as we know that one electron volt is equals to 1.602 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules okay now that is convert into joules that is equals to 100 means 10 square right into 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules that is equals to 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 17 minus 17 joules that is the kinetic energy now substitute the values in the formula de broglie's wavelength is equals to h is a planck's constant 6.625 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second by under root 2 into kinetic energy is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 minus 17 joules is given into mass of the electron that is into mass of the electron 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg okay so on solving this lambda is equals to on solving this the lambda is equals to the final answer is 1.228 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters we get okay instead of the numerical that is manual calculation okay we calculated and the answer is 
1.228 into 10 to the power minus 10. Yeah, 10 to the power minus 10. Right. So, that is the numerical based on the de Broglie's equation. Okay. Kinetic energy numerical is done. Right. So, next one let us say. Okay. Is it the concept is clear to all of you? Yes. Calculate the kinetic energy of the electron. Calculate, sorry, calculate the de Broglie wavelength of the electron having kinetic energy 100 electron volts. Okay. The kinetic energy of the electron is given. That is 100 electron volts. We have to calculate de Broglie's wavelength. That's all. That much is available. Okay. Once again, the problem is calculate de Broglie's wavelength of the electron having kinetic energy 100 electron volts. Okay. 100 electron volts. Now, in this, so the basic equation from the de Broglie's is lambda is equals to h by under root ke into m okay the data available h is equals to planck's constant okay planck's constant that is joule second si unit si units we consider we consider that is si unit it is si unit and mass of the electron also considered in si unit we should consider in the same units so now kinetic energy is equals to 100 electron volts given so now one electron volt is equals to this much joules okay then it is considered in SI units. That means kinetic energy from electron volts it is converted into joules. Okay, that should be done properly because all are considered in SI units only. Okay, after that conversions and SI units consideration, then substitute in the given formula. Okay, on solving this, the final answer of that is de Broglie's wavelength of the electron given based on the given data is. 1.228 into 10 to the power minus 10 okay right so this is the numerical based on the de Broglie now let us consider the next one is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle Heisenberg's uncertainty principle Yes, the concept is Heisenberg's uncertainty. Principle. Heisenberg's uncertainty. Heisenberg is the name of the scientist and it is uncertainty principle. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Okay, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Okay, the principle says that, the principle say, says that, that is delta x into delta p, that is uncertainty in the position and uncertainty in the momentum of the electron is greater than or equal to h by h by n pi h by n pi okay that means let us see this n must be that is delta x into delta p greater than or equal to h by n pi that is 4 pi that means now the statement of this heisenberg uncertainty principle statement okay being it is a principle we cannot say it is a definition okay it is statement the statement of heisenberg uncertainty principle okay it is impossible to determine simultaneously and accurately. It is impossible to determine simultaneously and accurately the change in position and change in velocity of the electron revolving around the nucleus in three dimensional space it is called. That is statement of Heisenberg uncertainty principle. I repeat again. It is impossible to determine simultaneously and exactly the change in position and change in velocity of the electron revolving around the nucleus in three dimensional space. Okay, that is the statement of Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Now, 
that means delta x is delta x is uncertainty in the position uncertainty in position that is or we can say change in position okay uncertainty in position means change in position change in position change in position and delta v delta p is equals to that is delta p is equals to m delta v that means delta v is equals to change in velocity change in velocity okay then h is the planck's constant we know that okay h is equals to planck's constant planck's constant okay h is a planck's constant and where we here m is equals to mass of electron mass of electron okay now once again the statement it is important point because according to bohr's theory we understood when electron is revolving around the nucleus in the first orbit or second orbit or third orbit whatever it may be that nth orbit okay blindly we can say that the distance from the nucleus to that electron okay and we can also explain the velocity of the electron okay that means we can predict separately accurately that means simultaneously and accurately only it is not possible according to uncertainty okay so according to bohr's theory we understood that we can identify the position of the electron and velocity of the electron in the nth orbit in the nth orbit of species like hydrogen means which contains one electron okay that we understand from the bohr's theory like that we can predict the position and velocity of the electron in the bohr's orbit but according to heisenberg he said that uncertainty it is impossible you cannot determine it is impossible to determine simultaneously and accurately the change in position and change in velocity okay but separately we can calculate it but simultaneously means at a time at once change in position and change in velocity cannot be determined that is the concept according to uncertainty principle therefore uncertainty principle is contradiction with bohr's theory you should remember that very important point heisenberg uncertainty principle is contradiction with bohr's theory okay that is the important point right once again the statement of bohr's theory that is uncertainty principle statement it is impossible to determine change in position that is uncertainty in the position and change in velocity that is uncertainty in the velocity it is impossible to determine simultaneously and exactly that means accurately the change in position and change in velocity of the electron revolving around the nucleus okay that is uncertainty principle so the mathematically the uncertainty principle can be represented like this delta x into delta p greater than or equal to h by n pi okay h by n pi where n is equals to 4 okay that means the product of uncertainty in position and uncertainty in the momentum greater than or equal to h by 4 pi okay h by 4 pi so now let us see let us see in this that is the statement of the heisenberg uncertainty principle now if if let us say first case if delta x is equals to h by four pi m delta v okay if uncertainty in the position that is if uncertainty in the velocity if it is determined to be as zero okay if it is determined to be as zero then uncertainty in the position it becomes infinity okay is it clear to all of you just you have to observe that okay if uncertainty in the velocity okay the formula is written like this delta x is equals to h by 4 pi m delta v okay so from this we can write the formula like this you are determining delta x okay now in this formula if delta v change in velocity uncertainty in the velocity is determined as zero so this becomes zero then delta x is becomes infinity 
okay that means uncertainty in the position becomes infinity next let us observe the second case suppose now you are calculating delta v is equals to h by 4 pi m delta x if uncertainty in the position is determined to be as zero okay this is determined as zero that means all becomes zero so then h by 0 then uncertainty in the velocity is becomes infinity undefined okay that is why uncertainty in the position uncertainty in the velocity can becomes uncertain when the change in position and change in velocity is determined like this okay once again what is uncertainty principle says one say only the statement of this it is impossible to determine simultaneously and accurately the change in position and change in velocity of the electron revolving around the nucleus in three dimensional plane okay that is the statement of uncertainty principle so uncertainty when delta v is determined as zero then uncertainty position becomes infinity Suppose, if uncertainty in the position is determined as 0, then uncertainty in the velocity becomes infinity. Okay. That is only the statement part we are taking care of that. Okay. Let in the next session, so we can see once again the clarity of this and we will exercise the numericals and significance of this Heisenberg uncertainty principle.